Hello and welcome to History Help channel. We have been talking about historical method and historiography. Uh, today in this slide show, we will be talking about more about history section. We are learning the subject historical method and historiography in four sections. The first is history, second is research, third is historiography and the final section is Indian historiography. Today we will be looking into more details on history, specifically on kinds of history. Hi and welcome to the channel. I am Usha who will be guiding you through this subject. So what are the kinds of history? There are different kinds of history. There is political history, constitutional history, legal history, diplomatic history, military history, economic history, social history, universal history and intellectual history. So we will be talking about each of them in detail. So let's take a look. In political history, so as you can see in the pictures, on the left there is monarchy, that is uh, the, the picture of a monarch being uh, um, um, crowned. And in the right you have a uh, voting machine where you are voting for a democracy. So political history is nothing but all the polit state, his rules, regulations, be it oligarchy, monarchy, democracy, all that has been um, taking place throughout the years. So politics is a very interesting part of history. Actually, history was completely thought to be only politics um, uh, in ancient times. History was written only with respect to state, its rulers, nothing else was considered. No social, no economic, no nothing, to, no talk about society. It was just about administration, it was just about ruler, it was just about the state. So history was closely connected with politics. It's only in the recent years, that is in the right from the 19th century, 20th century, that history has become very large, broad and comprehensive. So political history is nothing but uh, we talk about state, its rule, rules and regulations and all that. Uh, in fact, many of the um, uh, history has changed because of its political leaders and uh, their um, uh, agreements with other countries or their policies in the society. So that is political history. In fact, Sile says that all history is past politics. So the next history we will talk, kind of history we will talk about is constitutional history. So in the left you can see the constitution uh, drafted during the kingdom of Naples in Naples. In the right you can see uh, the US constitution being drafted and George Washington uh, present in the uh, body of uh, constitution lawmakers. So constitution history as you might have guessed it's all about constitution. Uh, Constitution is all about the uh, functions of the administration, of the judiciary, of the executive. It is It frames uh, a set of rules, regulations, articles, schedules and all that. So a constitution can be very huge or it can be small or it can be rigid or it can be flexible. Uh, England has a very flexible constitution. While our, our country's India's constitution is both rigid as well as flexible. There, there, is, there is a reason for this. See, a constitution has to be rigid. If it keeps changing all the time, then there is no stability in the constitution. People will not trust it. Say, today you have one set of rules, tomorrow you have another set of rules. So people will, or the public will not trust the constitution. So it is important for a constitution to be rigid. But constitution also should change with time. So it also should be flexible, adaptable. So taking this into consideration, our constitution is both rigid as well as flexible. And it is also one of the longest constitutions. Next kind of history is legal history. Now what is legal history? Legal history deals only with laws, rules, regulations. So it is uh, more mostly focused with the Courts or the laws of life or society. So, in the left, you have the um, Hammurabi, the code of Hammurabi depiction. Actually, the, uh, the person seated on the throne is the sun god. He is giving a set of laws to the um, Hammurabi, 
this person the right to have manu manu was the first uh, con- is considered in in hinduism as one of the first person uh, to start the um, uh, periods of time so legal history uh, um, uh, it, more, it focuses more on uh, laws like this be it the code of manu or the code of hammurabi or indian code indian penal code or um, the napoleonic code all this so it's more focused on the rules regulations that are governing the society so the next kind of history is the diplomatic history what is diplomatic history diplomacy is all to do with relationship between different nations so a diplomat is a person who deals with this the ambassadors are actually the representatives of um, the country so they are the ones who deal with the uh, international trade or war or uh, anything of the or the peace so diplomacy is act diplomatic history is a part of politics but it, it is gaining a lot of importance in the recent years in the military history you have uh, everything to do with wars their causes the strategies adopted in a war so uh, it is also the causes of the war effects of the war so psychology of the uh, what happens um, after a war what effect it has on the people and the society the psychological factors all of them will be spoken in military history even military history is gained a lot of importance after this we will come to economic history in the economic history uh, economic history was actually not so important until the 19th century but uh, with the uh, advent of karl marx on the right you can see the karl marx photo karl marx hegel uh, comte all wrote about uh, traders laborers how they how they struggle how civilizations have come up Uh, due to st- uh, economic reasons how wars take place due to economic reasons so all this has become economic history so in economic history it considers that economics is be is behind uh, many of the events happening for example um, see the uh, be it the explorations in america and the new world and uh, or be it explorations in africa the explorations were also triggered due to economic factors the lack of land and the lack of careers or jobs in england made many people uh, and many uh, organizations um, taking the help of uh, the char- queen charters and, uh, and the monarch charters to go ahead and explore to make settlements in different parts of the world and also economics is also behind wars um from from east india company from being a trading company it slowly started um con- going for conquests in the in india and slowly started developing colonies and having trade relationship with the king started uh, forming its own um, you know administration in the country it has economics as one of the chief factors so economic history looks into uh all stories of history which has economics behind it okay so that is economics history social history now what is social history social history talks about institutions it talks about customs it talks about dress art and uh, family all that so social history looks into all these patterns see we may not we cannot say that economics is only the one of the reasons for things to happen when society plays a very important role what man does in his society his inventions his ideas all that is a part of social history so social historians study society in depth while economic historians study economics in depth so that is this kind of history next and the last which we come is the intellectual history intellectual history is all about ideas there could be ideas on science ideas of technology ideas of um, you know uh, economics or even historiography which is the history of history is all about uh, in uh, intellectual history intellectual history focuses more on the mind it focuses more on the thoughts it focuses more on the progress of man so everything considered like thinking intellectual all that and culture comes under intellectual history one of the uh, book that uh, talks about intellectual history is the decline of the west by spengler or the study of history written by 
kind of thing. So all this is um, uh, intellectual history. There is one more component which uh, which, uh, which is not mentioned here, and that is universal history, which talks about uh, the entire survey of uh, you know entire survey of um, human culture throughout the world. That is universal. So one of the books written is uh, Outlines of World History. This was written by H. G. Wells. So this talks about universal history or uh, history of civilization in England. So that was written by Buchel. That is also a universal history. So these are the different kinds of history. So history is very uh, no, no longer narrow. It can be seen through different lens of economy, so society, social, of politics, of ideas, and all that. So I hope this uh, section is very clear. Uh, please keep subscribing to this channel for more um, such slideshows. In the next section, we will be dealing with. Um, the uh, history and its relationship with the other social sciences. Thank you.